Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a quick recording for this color along. So what I decided to do is something completely different than I've done before. Um, when I had done my ink tense color along, I had done those short 30 minute, you know, sections and then it, I think it was like five parts. And I had done a poll asking if you guys liked longer or shorter color alongs. Longer meaning less parts, shorter meaning more parts, but like 30 minutes. Well, it was kind of split down the middle in the end. So what I decided to do was combine both into one. So this is a single color along put out. However, it will be split into sections. And each section I tried to keep pretty short, about 30-ish minutes, so that you could do part one and then come back and do part two. And I do have them time stamped in the description below so that you can just pick up where you left off. Now we are working on this page here, which is a friendly encounter. So you will need your Flower Fairies coloring book. And then you will need some extra supplies for this color along. Um, I do recommend a heat tool. I have the Ranger Heat It craft tool. You can use a hair dryer if you don't have that. Um, you will also need an Arteza white gel pen, and I used an Artship glitter paint pen. Um, these are for the end when we do our embellishments. You will need a rag and a water brush. This is just the Kuretake Zig water brush. I'll leave links to all this in the description below. And then you will need your Albrecht Durers <laughs> right there. So I will put all the color names in the um, description below as well. Since these names aren't changing, I'm pretty safe to put the names in there. But this is the only colors we are using. So it's actually not a lot of colors. However, you'll learn how to use all of these and create this page here. So I hope you guys enjoy the color along. Please let me know what you think of this format in the comments below. Part one, I will be starting it off as if it was a brand new video, but it was like halfway through this when I decided, hey, maybe I'll just combine these. So that's why you get to hear me say welcome twice. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and let's get on to the color along. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new to the channel. We are doing a color along today, and that will be from the Flower Fairies coloring book. I had a few of you request a color along after I had done the flip through. So I had picked this page. It's the cute little girl with the snail, and um, the name of it is actually because these come from the original Flower Fairy books. Uh, it's called A Friendly Encounter. So <laughs> that's the name. I'm actually doing this as part of the August Fairy Mania tag. And um, M's Coloring Creations created the tag, but it's kind of a challenge tag. So there's prompts. And the challenge is how many can you finish of those prompts in a month? And so one of the prompts was a fairy child. So I got a little fairy child here that we're going to color today. And of course, it is A is for August 2021, part of my alphabet coloring challenge. So you're probably like, ooh, what medium are we going to do? Well, you should know, I guess, actually, it'll be on the title. <laughs> but um, I'm going to use my Albrecht Durers for this, I think. <laughs> this will be interesting. Um, I've actually never colored a whole page with them. I've used them for accenting, but... You know what? Today is a good day to learn. And then I may use gouache for the background. I don't know. Right now, my focus is coloring in all the stuff. So yes, we're going to use Albrecht Dewar. So you will need a water brush, or you can use a jar, two jars of water. You'll need a clean and dirty jar, you know, one for rinsing, one for wetting. Um, and a regular round brush. I'm just using my Kuretake Zig um, detailer brush because it's just easier. <laughs> so with watercolor pencils, I'm not as worried about it. 
You will want a little rag so you can wipe off your brush. That's just my Paul Rubin little thingy there. Okay, so I picked some colors and let's see how this works. The paper is thick enough to take a water medium, so I think we'll be all right. I mean, it's not super thick, but I think we'll be good. So the two colors we're gonna start with, and we may layer and add more later. I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna start with olive green yellowish and may green for now. All right, so let's grab the olive green yellowish first. And I'm basically gonna color all this grass a similar color. In fact, you know what, actually, we should probably add a yellow. So we have may green. Let's add light chrome yellow as well. Reason I'm adding a yellow is, I mean, there are these huge grass reeds and I kind of picture her like a little mini fairy in the middle of the grass. So the sun, you know, when it hits the grass has a little hint of yellow. So yeah, we'll need also light chrome yellow, which is 106, I think it says. All right, let's just do this. See what happens. <laughs> Um, I think we'll start. I'm not going to be ultra zoomed in on this one just because I want you guys to be able to see. So this piece of grass is really long. Okay, so I'm going to put down some olive green yellowish. Here. And then I definitely want it where it's going to be all shadowed. Okay. And you don't have to press hard with your watercolor pencils. In fact, if you press hard and leave a bunch of, you know, scratch lines for you to cover up, you're making your life a lot harder. Okay, with your May Green now. Gonna leave the tip for some yellow. Let's see how this ends up blending out. Nothing like trying a medium the first time on a new book. <laughs> um, okay, light chrome yellow. We're just gonna add a little yellow up here. Bring it a little bit down in there. I'm doing a very light layer because I don't know how heavy these are gonna be on this paper once I activate them. All right, so get your water brush, just make sure it's wet. Let's start at the top here and activate the yellow because that's the lightest. And I'm just going to use circular motions. And then I'm going to go into the May green and then mix into the, um, oh my gosh, olive green. <laughs> I was like, what color is that? And then I'm just kind of gently wiggling the color down and then wiping off my brush just so it's not soaking. Okay, same thing down here. Also, you don't want too much of the dark pigment pigment on your um, brush because then it'll kind of get muddled. So I'm activating the lighter color and then just kind of pushing my way into the darker one. Like I said, we may need another layer. I just want to see how these come across first. It's pretty. I know it looks kind of drab right now, doesn't it? <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and keep adding. I'm going to do like everything using these three colors, but kind of going to alternate how they're placed on the paper, more or less. And in fact, you know, we'll add one more green combo just to change it up so for now we'll stick with the green on the grass so again olive green yellowish now seeing this one and how light it is i'm actually going to add a little more this time so we're going to start with this big grass what's it called blade yeah blade of grass my thing is like you follow the lines and some of them just end into nowhere <laughs> um doesn't matter because you know what this whole thing is just going to be a big green mess at the end of the day 
Like I said, I'm probably going to go in here with gouache or something. Because gouache is a little thicker, a little more opaque, although you can make it translucent um, with extra water. But my aim is I want it a little more opaque so it covers a little more. So I'm adding a little extra here. I want this one darker because we're going to have to go and layer back on the other one. Because I got to stick to my A challenge. Normally I could just go in and darken with my Faber Castell Polychromos, but I can't do that. I mean, I could go back in with like a wax or even my Art and Fly. But you know, I've never colored a whole page using just Albrecht Doors, and I thought that would be really fun learning curve. So right now I'm focusing on all the grass that have like this line in the middle. See how those look and then we may bring in another green or we'll just stick to this green. Yeah, the hardest part is just like following it. Where does it go into this mess down here? We also have one right in the spine. I'll probably zoom you guys in more when we work on like finer details, but for like the grass, I don't think you guys need to be zoomed in. <laughs> I did, however, fix my autofocus problem. Okay, I didn't fix it. Samsung released an update the other night that fixed it. <laughs> so I was like, woohoo! They finally added a feature that locks the autofocus because there was no way to lock it before. It was uh, quite stupid. All right, see, I'm just laying it down a little bit heavier. And we're still using the same color. This is like a hot jungle mess of grass here. Okay, see, so down here, it's going to be really hard to differentiate between what's flower, stem, whatever. That's why I'm thinking I'll just have like across this way, just a straight up green background that slowly transitions into my sky because of how like crazy chaotic it is. Okay, we've got another one with a line here. I'm not using heavy pressure though, and kind of like with ink tents, you don't need to really sharpen these because you're going to use your water um, to push it. Can you activate these with a colorless alcohol blender? Yes. However, these are watercolor pencils, and I actually prefer, um, grab your May Green. I prefer to use like water mediums with watercolor pencil. Ink Tents, however, is a water soluble ink, and I'm not as stickler to the rules on that one. <laughs> but I also wanted the look of watercolor in this. Book. I thought because this page was so big and open it would and like how the flowers are designed here see how they're just big and fluffy they would be perfect for watercolors so I want the watercolor look uh, yes I could have used my art and fly watercolors but I am working right now on swatching and mixing those to see what colors I can create out of them Okay, then we have one here. You'll notice I'm laying down more this time. So we'll be going back and adding to that other one. Just want to make sure it's dry. Okay. Down there. So we have uh, this one over here. Just turn your pencil so it kind of wears down evenly. Okay, 
Now grab your light chromium, chrome yellow, not chromium. Um, it won't really show up on the camera because the way the sun is setting right now <laughs> just kind of bounces right off that silver. Basically just fill in some white space, kind of where the sun would be hitting it. Get a little bit more of a yellow glow to it. Let's go back and add to this one while we're here. So I'm going to add more yellow to the tip there. Okay, and grab the um, May Green. <laughs> I'm going to forget that name like throughout. I've noticed when I don't have color cards, I'm constantly like, what color is this again? <laughs> so forgive me, forgive me. Oh my gosh, we didn't even color that one hiding in the spine there. I'm laying down another coat of this, and then we might as well get the May Green in here. That one's really awkward in the spine. Okay, grab your Olive Green Yellowish so that we can add to this one here. A lot of people will use these as a base coat and then go over it with their um, polychromos, which you can totally do. And if you don't have polychromos, you could go over this with any pencil. Okay. But it's just the polychromos complement these very well. I mean, they have the same names. Okay, make sure your brush, brush isn't like soaking wet. The more water you add, the more diluted your color becomes. And the more crinkly your page becomes. I'll put this here so I can brush it off. And then also you have to keep in mind the more water, the more um, chance you're going to go out of the lines. So just got to be careful there. I do have the Arteza Expert watercolor pencils and Arteza pencils. I've never actually used them together though, even though they do have similar names um, and they could kind of be used like you would with Albrecht Durer's and Polychromos. Just haven't done it. Um, I wasn't really impressed with their watercolor pencils. It was my first experience with a watercolor pencil, and I do use watercolor paints, but I was new to the pencil realm, and I was just like, oh, I don't know. The pigment was very flat. Usually, watercolor pencils are flat anyway, but once you activate them, that's when you're like, oh gosh, those are so pretty. And then also just like how they melt in the water, um, or dissolve, I should say. But the Arteza's constantly left lines. Whereas see how these are just flawless. I mean, the second the water hits them, like look how they just dissolve. Perfect blends. See, I have a yellow here, so we want to make sure and activate that. And then just drag it into that brownish, greenish color. In here, just pull, kind of just blot it around. Okay. Just activate that one. Oh, I think we had. There's some color right there I think we missed, so let's just grab our um, olive green yellowish. Like I said, it's really hard to tell. And this might actually go down in here. If not, it is now. <laughs> if I had one complaint about this book, at least on this page, it's like, wait, what's what? That's why I'm definitely going to use a water medium to just kind of create a big poof background of color. So we have yellow here, so we want to activate that and pull it into the green up above and just kind of wiggle your brush. But see how it dissolves so flawlessly? Whereas with my Arteza Expert watercolor pencils, 
they the lines did not dissolve I mean it took a ton of water and you would still see the pencil lines and then once you finally dissolved it all the color itself was pretty like just it wasn't very vibrant at all nothing pretty about it all right, so here we want to activate this down here and pull it into the dark space. And just kind of blot it around. Same thing, we have yellow up here, so let's move it up towards that green we have at the top. Then pull it down. It's hard for me because I tend to work dark to light, but with watercolors, you really have to be careful with that. <laughs> um, like especially with like ink tents too. At least watercolors, you can reactivate and move back around. But even then, especially if you're blending some colors that normally don't blend well together and could create mud, you want to be really cautious. If you see any like little harsh spots where you you know maybe left a water droplet and it's left a mark just go back over it with your water brush pick it up and redistribute the color okay there we go And down here, same thing, we got a lighter version that we want to slowly push into the dark, but see how it just dissolves? Barely any water on my brush too, by the way. I like a pretty dry brush um, when I'm doing coloring books. I actually like loose watercolor, which is just tons of water, but when I'm in a book like this, I tend to keep my brush a little drier, plus it keeps you from getting crinklies. Okay, I'm liking the way the greens and the yellows are working, but I want to bring in more greens. So let's grab, let's grab chrome, uh, chromium oxide green, I think is what it's called. Could be just chrome oxide. <laughs> That's permanent green olive, but we'll need that one too. Okay, I need to put these in a normal case. All right, for sure we're going to want chrome oxide green, permanent green olive, and then I feel like I'm going to need something else. Eh, maybe not. Let's try these two. Keep it simple. Okay, so let's start tackling... The other pieces of grass, not quite the flower stems, but the other ones. So going in with um, chrome oxide green. This is where it's like so messy because look at this. <laughs> I can't tell where anything goes. I'm kind of like following it down. We'll kind of just use a combo of all these greens. Let's see where that takes us. Can't tell. Okay, so that's off that stem, so let's leave that be. Uh, this one here. It's like a hot mess in here. Okay, and we have a one over here. Tell what that ends into. <sighs> we might just start slapping color down and calling it good. <laughs> like, yep, you're grass now. 
Oops, I went out of the lines, but like I said, I'm doing a messy little background in there, so I don't really care too much. I think that's all part of that stem. These ones over here, don't know what they're part of, but they're going to be this color now. Okay, and then these ones over here. I'm not going to go super heavy with this uh, chrome oxide green because it is a dark color. I don't know what that goes to, but like even in my swatch chart, it's pretty dark. Okay, let's get those in there. All right, now grab your permanent green olive. And we're just going to add this top but we're going to leave some white spaces on some of these and we'll drag the color in there for the highlight as opposed to using an actual color for the highlight. It's a slightly different technique. Just as fun. That in there. See, I'm leaving white space. That's because I'm going to drag the color in there. And it's one thing that makes um, watercolors really fun, watercolor pencils, because you can just drag it and create a, you know, a gradient naturally without actually sitting there and layering. So it can save you time. I mean, that's one thing I like about ink tents. You don't have to layer ink tents. You could just drag a color out and create a gradient. That's so why I like if I do a page with ink tens, I finish it pretty quickly. In fact, most of my time is just waiting for things to dry. <laughs> Nothing like watching paint dry. <laughs> All right, let's activate those and see how those turn out. Just got to re-wet my brush. Okay. So you still want to grab the lightest color and then carefully move it into the darker one. So here with the lighter color, I'm going to first push that into the white space and then wiggle it down into the shadow. Okay. Oh, we still have one right here too. So I'm kind of Trying to not drag the shadow color anywhere, but I want to drag the lighter color out. Show you up here, it'll be a little easier to see. So see how I grab this lighter one and just gently drag it into the white space? And then you fill that and it had created its own little gradient. And I'm just gently dragging it down into this darker color. Kind of just picking up any excess water and wiping it onto my rag. Okay. Down here, same thing, just look where your lighter color is, activate that first, gently drag it into the darker one. Now, yes, you could put these on a palette, activate them, and then bring them over like watercolors, but if I wanted to do that, I would just break out a watercolor palette. <laughs> uh, at least that's how I look at it. Like, well, there's no real point in using the pencil to get into those little nooks and crannies if I'm just activating it on a palette next to me. But that is one way to use them if you don't like putting it straight onto the paper. In fact, like with Arteza brand ones, I recommend it because they won't leave the lines on your page. You'll just be activating them off to the side. Some over here. Okay. 
I got those ones done. I do like that green combo. That's looking pretty, actually. And so let's set those there. Okay, so let's see. I think we'll use that green combo for the stems, but I am going to add a little bit. I need either a lighter green or just our yellow. Mm, yeah, we can just try the yellow and see what that does. Why not? Okay, so grab your chrome oxide green. Hard to tell what ends and begins where. And then up under this petal, it's or flower, it's going to be a little darker. Now see, this one will be all exposed. But right here under this part of the stem is not. Follow it down, and then this one has a piece coming off of it here. Okay, and then this one will have some shadow here and here. Okay, and then this one comes down into some leaves. Can't tell. I think those are grasses coming off of it and little mushrooms, it looks like. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so then grab your um, permanent green olive. This one is really hard in the spine here. It's my biggest pet peeve with books when they just shove stuff into the spine. It's like, you know I have to color that. Why'd you do that? I'm leaving some white space. I'm leaving all that white because I'm just going to drag that. And then up here, obviously it's going to be a little dark on that side. We have a stem here. Part of the leaf. It comes down here. Just up some white space. Yep, I'll do her skin tone and everything also in watercolors. It'll be fun. All right, grab your light chrome yellow. We're just going to add this in small little spurts here and there. Because I really want to drag mostly the green and not a ton of yellow. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit here and there. Okay. Get our water brush again. Make sure it's wet. Okay, so I'm going to take some of the light green that's here and pull it there. And just kind of wiggle it into that spine, <laughs> that awkward little spot. And then we're just going to slowly drag it into that dark color. 
looking pretty. Okay, so up here, we're gonna take some of that green and just drag it into the yellow. Some of this green, drag it into the white space. This green, we're gonna mix it and drag it into the yellow and white space up here. Then we'll pull it down into that part of the stem. Okay. Pull a little bit of this green here. Get really focused on these watercolor ones, so I'm like really paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Just remember to pull your colors carefully. Okay, so down here I have some yellow and white space, so I want to pull those out first and then pull it into my darker ones down here. Okay, and then at the tip of the leaves I'm going to grab that light green and yellow and just kind of focus on pushing that color out first for highlights. Then I'm just going to pull it down. If you notice it's not dissolving anymore, you might need to add more water to your brush. Like I said, I tend to keep mine a little drier but you don't want it like legit dry all the way here. <laughs> you still need some water. And just remember if you're ever going back over the light into the dark, wipe off your brush. It's kind of what you do when you're doing ink tints too. Now I'm gonna take this yellow and just kind of pull it down. Get that white space. Okay. We already we activated up there but not down here so I'm going to take this yellow and green mix it here and just pull it into these little pieces then pull it up went out a little but I'm not super worried about it because I'm going to make a really splotchy green background later and just get that dark green that's hiding under there There. See, it's naturally giving you a whole bunch of color and you're not even like sitting there layering for days. It's pretty. Okay. So let's see, we'll keep going with this combination of greens. Um, so that'll be your homework. <laughs> Coloring homework. Yay. <laughs> um, so yeah. Just kind of do a combination of the following. So anywhere you want like this olive color, we're going to do the olive green yellowish, may green, and light chrome yellow. Then for this darker green, you're going to want your chrome oxide green and permanent green olive. And we're just going to keep going throughout. So all the stems will have the these two darker greens and a little bit of the light chrome yellow, whereas all the more grassy ones are going to have this olivey one, but then also a combo of the two bolder greens. So kind of just mix it throughout. Um, just make sure you keep the stems the same as you go through. And then when we come back to part two, we will probably tackle all the florals, maybe purple, because there's a lot of really pretty purples. Yeah, we'll do purples and pinks and an orange. Let's just put them all in there. Well, I'll show you guys how to blend some colors. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out while we colored some grass. Just keep plugging away at your grass. I'm going to work on mine, and I will see you guys back here for part two very soon. Okay, and we're back. So I finished all the grass and leaves or what I assumed were leaves <laughs> using those colors that we were using. And now we are going to tackle the florals. So I'm gonna pick the colors with you guys because I think that'll help 
instead of just coloring along, you can kind of get inside my brain and see how I do this. So I had mentioned in the first part of this video, I was thinking pinks, purples, and oranges. And looking at my chart here, I definitely want to do, ooh, this one here, manganese violet. Okay. And then maybe bring that into mid purple pink. Let's see, I have my magenta pink matter. Oops, I might be out of order. Okay, so then bring that into mid purple pink. And then maybe bring that into the light magenta. Because that's a pretty color. All right, and then I want some oranges as well to blend into these. So let's grab, let's grab our cad, no, let's grab dark cadmium orange. And then let's grab, um, we already have a yellow out. So we'll keep that yellow that we're already using just for balance, so light chrome yellow. And I'm going to need a dark purple as well. So I have manganese violet, and I'm thinking, let's do mauve. Mauve would be a good one. Is mauve on the same tray? Yes, it is. All right. So we're going to play around with that and see how it works. I am trying something different with this color along. Originally, I was going to split it into parts, but I think what I'll do is I'm recording in parts. Oops, my chair falling over. However, I'm coming back and just I'll add them all together as one. So it'll be one long color along, and that way you're not waiting for any parts whatsoever. And I'll just compile them together, but then I can still just sit here and do short little stints with you guys. Um, one thing I did change up was you'll see I've colored the leaves green, and these are technically leaves, but I want some more floral, <laughs> so we're going to make them flowers. Even though they're probably supposed to be leaves, I'm filling the flowers. Okay, so first thing I want to tackle is these big ones, these big poofy ones up here. So let's start. Can go. All right, let's start with our dark color, mauve. I'm actually going to put this underneath here where we're going to have like a shadow. Let's be taking care of all our shadow areas. I may add it up in there in a little, we'll see. So let's just put it down here for now. Okay, and then grab your manganese violet. Now, not all of them are going to have, like, orange in them. I plan to have little transitions here and there. Okay. I'm going to put this magnes, however you say it, into these areas here. It's kind of like, it just it's fluffy all over, so I'm kind of just going to be loose with it. Because <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to like differentiate what's what in here. Which is one reason I picked it for watercolors, because I was like, you know, this would be a great one. You can just be all sloppy and no one will even know. All right, um, and then I'm also gonna take that same color, kind of start adding a little bit in the center, almost like drawing a star, but not thinking about it too much. And this one, I'll just add a little here. Like really, just don't think about it too much. Just put the color down and call it good. Okay, then we'll grab our middle purple pink. Same thing with this one. I'm just gonna add little bits here and there. Because obviously I want the pink in there. Create a nice transition. All right, so we're adding the purple for the transit, or the, like a purple pink is what this color is. It's called middle purple pink, but it's a purple pink. And again, I'm just kind of adding it randomly. Because I'm almost going for like a loose watercolor effect here. <laughs> Nothing's going to be defined in these little bulbs. 
because I don't even know what the heck they are. Okay, and let's take our light magenta. We're just gonna add that in randomly. Not everywhere. I wanna leave some white space for highlights. You know, we take our lightest color and drag it across. Definitely wanna do that here. Okay, let's activate that first and then we'll see how this looks. Get your water brush or paint brush, whichever you were using. Just make sure it's nice and wet. All right, so let's start at the bottom. Remember to go from your lightest color into the darkest. And I kind of like to just move it around a little. Okay. Then over here, see so a bunch of white space. So I'm going to drag this color into the white space before moving it around. And then just wipe it off. Just kind of wiggle the colors. Oops, down here we didn't activate that. There we go. Okay. Same thing. I'm just going to drag it into the white space and then come back down to where it's more concentrated. And then kind of just do like a little stippling motion, you know? Help spread the color around and make it look not splotchy. For the center, I'm just going to kind of activate it and pull it out. Yeah, we're going to be a little more messy with this one because it's okay if you go out of the lines on this. Also, I just want it to have more of a, a fluffy, muddled look. Not muddy, muddled. And then grab your purple that's here in the center and just kind of wiggle that around. Try not to get that into your petals if you can. Yeah, I just kind of want it to look a little more loose. I don't know what this flower is or where it begins and ends. <laughs> so I'm like, well, we're just going to make colors look pretty together. I might add some gel pen accents at the end with my Arteza white gel pen, so I stick to my A's. Okay, so just bring that down. Fill in some white space. But see how it kind of creates its own little natural gradient here because we don't have any concentrated color there. It's pretty and fluffy. Pretty and fluffy. All right, let's do one more with the purples and then we'll do a pink and orange one. So here's another fluffy flower. So we'll do that one. And because there's a lot of similarities, I'll kind of, again, take your mauve. We're just adding in some shadow. Um, because there's similarities, you know, I'll do a few on camera with you. And then a couple by myself. All right, grab your manganese violet. Just remember, we're going to have the purples and purple pinks on the big fluffy flowers. But, like, you can change up how you use them. Because you don't want each flower to look... 100% identical. It's nothing like that in nature. There's always those little quirks. Just like I might add a little more of that one here. This one here. Like if you want it more, a flower more purple, add more purple to that one. Whereas if you want it more pink, add more pink to that one. Like just have fun putting the pencil to paper and letting the water do all the work is pretty much what I'm saying. All right, middle purple pink. As long as you don't wiggle your water brush around like crazy and blend things, you won't ever get a real muddy look. Like I have no fear about putting colors that normally would make mud next to one another just to create some fun contrast, but you can't blend with your brush. You need to be very cautious with how you mix those colors. 
All right, now I'm grabbing my um, light magenta, just kind of adding it in some areas where I have too much white space. All right, see I still left quite a bit of white space. I'm just gonna activate this darker area down below first. My brush is getting dry. Okay, then I'm gonna drag into the white space and push down. Just remember to always wipe off your brush. Now I will tell you these don't reactivate as easily as traditional watercolors, so keep that in mind. So you want to try and get a lot of the imperfections fixed while it's still wet. They will reactivate, it's just not as easy as a, a traditional watercolor. I don't know if that's because of how they're bound or what. I'm not really sure on that. <laughs> so can't really tell you the science behind it. But like if you notice the color's too concentrated, just wipe off your water brush. But just kind of drag the color wherever you want it to go. Pretty. Uh, sorry for the lighting today. It's overcast. Okay, so let's do some pinks into oranges. Um, I think the middle purple pink should blend out just fine along with this one here. Okay, so grab your mauve. And like on these smaller flowers is where I wanna do the purple, pink, orange. So I'm gonna grab the mauve. Just kinda of add it where I would see shadows, more or less. Okay, then I'm going to grab my middle purple pink. I'm not putting it on every single petal, just kind of randomly placing it. Now take your um, dark cadmium orange and just add that to a few of the petals. Not all, just a few. In fact, I'll zoom you in so you can kind of see. Sorry about that. <laughs> Rapid fire zooming. All right, see how that's there? So you can see how I have a little bit of orange on some, but not all. I gotta move my rag off my page though because it's getting kind of wet. All right, so with this one, you're going to take your water brush, activate that orange, and just drag it into the purple gently. Not too much because you'll create mud, so you're just dragging it in. No wiggling. See, so just drag it down. See, I'm dragging it into the purple. Now, if I were to drag the purple out into the orange, I'm going to get a really ugly color. It's not as cool looking on such a small space, <laughs> but adds a cool effect. I do want a little more pink, so I'm just going to take the tip of my pencil and just grab some pink with my water brush and just kind of move it around. Kind of wet my brush a little more and then just kind of wiggle that color. See how if I add more water, it waters it down a little. There we go. Yep, definitely much better. I want more pink in there, so it pops. Okay, let's do another one just so you guys can see it. We have another little one over here. So we'll take our mauve. Just kind of add that at random. And this one, I think we'll use the yellow instead of the orange on this one. Grab your middle purple pink. Careful, on the side where you touched it with a water brush, it's gonna be extra crumbly and wet. <laughs> so 
see how I'm adding it like at random and then light chrome yellow just gives for a fun effect now again remember you must move from the light and just pull it into the dark if you're using a water brush with ink tents and blending funky colors you'd basically do the same thing keeps you from getting anything wacky and there's scout again you guys thought you'd go a whole long time without ever hearing her jump from the stairs you were wrong <laughs> In fact, I think she's starting to do it more now. She's like, well, she didn't seem to mind when I did it on that last recording, so I'm just going to do it all the time now. But yeah, she's fine. Just a lazy dog that can't walk down the stairs because apparently that's too much effort for her. All right, so again with this one, I'm going to take a teeny bit of the purple off my pencil here. No, not purple, the middle purple pink. Just kind of dot it in okay just always wipe off your brush when you do that because you're gonna have a heavy concentration on your brush all right let me zoom you guys back out okay so there we go so we have two kinds of flowers we have one where we're just kind of playing with the purple pink orange and yellows and then this one is getting, if you notice you get any harsh lines, just go back with your water brush and smooth them out. That'll happen when you kind of uh, use the stippling motion and stipple them in, but you can soften those back out. See how I'm softening the lines. Um, and then yeah, we have the purples and pinks up here with the fluffy flowers. Basically all I'm going to do is keep using that same technique. So let me go over the colors with you um, again. Oops, get them all back in order. Okay, so for these big fluffy flowers, you will have Mauve 249, um, Manganese Violet 160, Middle Purple Pink 125, Light Magenta 119. <laughs> I just realized Light Magenta is Magenta Hell in the translation. Oh, yeah, it's a little, a little dark. Okay, and then for the smaller flowers, you'll use a combination whatever combo you want like I'm showing you the technique but you you go to town with however you want to use these colors they'll be alright I promise so a combo of mauve 249 middle purple pink 125 dark cadmium orange 115 and then light chrome yellow 106 so just play around with those um, you'll want the purple pinks on all the fluffy f flowers so you'll have this one one here one here, one here, and then you got two on this side. And then just use a combo of those fun colors to do this one here, this one up here. There's actually one right here in front of this fluffy one. And all these little ones that are just kind of hanging out. And then when we come back, we will color our fairy and snail together. And then I will start the background, I guess. That's what, what we'll have after that. So yeah, just keep coloring your flowers. If you feel like something is not dark enough, or you know, like say you go, I, I really want more purple in some areas. Like I can take my mauve here, now that this is dry. I can add some mauve here. Maybe I want some more mauve right here. Okay, and then say I want to add my middle purple pink and get a little bit more definition in some of these areas once it's dry you can go back and add whatever you want it's just when it's wet you either need to pull it straight off the pencil lead but remember it'll be highly concentrated if you do that um or just come back after like i'm doing here so maybe i want this one a little darker down here okay I'll just go activate those mauve areas first. Just make sure you're dragging them back into the old one so it mixes better. Okay, the brush is a little dry. Then I'll just take those middle purple pink spots that I put down and kind of 
wet them and drag them wherever I want. You can wipe off your brush if you want it to stay in one area as opposed to dragging it elsewhere. But that's the great thing about these Albrecht Durers is you can layer them so you can keep bringing more color in. Let's see, I'll just take my brush that's clean, wipe up some of that because I don't want it to go out that far. There. So yeah, just keep adding color as much as you want to make these as deep in color or as light as you want. Less is more though, so never use a heavy pressure with these. Always use a light pressure, wait for it to dry, come back and add more. Because like, see these ones here? This is almost dry and it's still pretty vibrant, so I probably won't add much. If anything, I may come in with a tiny bit of orange off the tip here. And add that in some areas where I want that orange to really pop. See, I want but see how concentrated it is when you pull it right off of the pencil? So you do need to keep that in mind. Like see, that's all nice and pigmented. But now maybe I'll take some of my darker color and gently add that in. There, I mean, you can keep adding for days. <laughs> Just when you thought you like you weren't going to layer because you're doing watercolor pencils, that's when you're like, oh my gosh, I could keep layering. So yeah, just play around with it. Um, and then when we come back, I'm gonna make sure everything's dry. Definitely make sure you're waiting for each section we're doing together to dry before moving on to the next. Um, especially like say when we get to the background, you're gonna want to pause just kind of like I do in the recording after we finish our fairy and her um, little companion here, you'll want to pause, wait for everything to dry before tackling the other parts. So just keep that in mind. So I will see you in a little bit with our painted flowers and we will move on to the next half. Okay, so we have completed all of our flowers as part of part two, we'll call it. Um, and as you can see here, I've done all mine. I did some with the orange and the yellow mixed in, but the big fluffy ones were just the purples and pinks. And then there was a few down here. Down here, I think this is some grass, but it like goes to nowhere. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, some of these odds and ends in the background that aren't very clear, I'm just gonna mesh into our background and make it easier on us. So the next thing we need to get working on is our snail. I've already grabbed some colors for that. Now some of these colors we already have out, which will make it easier. I'm trying to tr transition with colors and keep using the same ones throughout. One, it's a limited color palette, so that helps, um, even though we're still like over 12 pencils, but the less is more, and it also helps create balance, especially when you use a color here, somewhere down here, and vice, you know, vice versa. Okay, so for these snails, green little body, we're going to break back out the olive green, yellowish, and may green, and then we're adding green gold to the mix. So, starting with the olive green, yellowish, just add that. This will definitely be more of a, a shadow type color. I know this is supposed to be his shadow right here, but it just looks like a trail of slime or something <laughs> to me. All right. Okay, and then grab the May Green. Just add that in. Okay. Now grab your green gold. I'm gonna put that overlapping some of the areas where the brown and, or uh, not brown, but the olive green already are. Okay. Make sure your water brush is wet. 
start over here. Just blending those down. Got the little yellow. I'm going to pull some of the green into that yellow. We may have to add more green after, but I want to see how he looks first because that green gold has a really nice tint to it. And once some of this green mixes in there, it might just look fine. Just was going for a very earthy looking snail. It's not bad at all. Okay, so for the shell, I did grab some browns. And what we're going to use is burnt umber 280 and raw umber uh, 180. So we'll take our burnt umber, just kind of put that in oops, the corners, you know, kind of where the shell is curving in on itself. I'm going to use these really lightly though because I don't actually want the shell to be brown brown. I want it to be a very pale, watered down brown. Okay, right now with your raw umber. If you add enough water to these, they almost come off like a nice tan color. Now in where it's like obviously curving more, I want more concentration of color. And some of these other parts, I'm leaving white space because we'll drag the color out, make it nice and light there. We got that there. Okay. So then just with your water brush again. See how I'm just dragging that out and pushing the brown down. Just wipe off your brush if you feel like you have too much brown. Same thing here. I'm just pulling a little bit of the brown out. So see how it gives it kind of a tannish color. That's my whole goal here is like an off-white with a hint of brown shell. Okay, same thing. I want the tan areas right here first, so I'm going to activate that. Then I'll start getting into my darker colors. Just wipe off your brush if you start seeing any puddles or too much of a color you don't want there. Let's activate the brown down here. There, and it has a nice little look to it. It's kind of golden, kind of brown, and we can always go back in with more brown and darken up like, you know, here where it's starting to curve or like in between there. But we can wait and see how it turns out first. Oh, I have to refill my water brush. Okay, for her skin tone, I'm going to keep it really simple because this is kind of a beginner's tutorial into Albrecht Durer, so we don't want to go crazy. We're just going to grab our beige red, which is actually something else in the polychromos. <laughs> I just can't remember. So Albrecht Durer's have the uh, old polychromo names. It's funny, they changed the names on polychromos, but they just left the Albrecht Durer's but I'm trying to remember what beige red is. I want to say it's like flesh light or something like that. I'll look it up later. So I'm just basically putting a, a small coat where the shadow areas of her skin will be because we will actually just drag the color for a nice gradient. And then that will give the effect of a highlight without having to layer. Now you could totally sit here and shade the skin if you want. Um, I'm just trying to make it beginner friendly. Skin is pretty rough to do for beginners with watercolors. 
or watercolor pencils just because you have to blend it all out without muddying it up so especially once you start adding in like the browns and stuff for your shadows it can get a little dicey so we're just going to keep it very simple all right make sure your brush is wet and then we'll just and clean because we're using a very pale color so you definitely want your brush to be clean because if you have any brown left on it, that brown is going to show up on the highlight areas. So you gotta be really careful of that. Let's see. Sorry about that, guys. I had to pause my color along and took a few days <laughs> in the process, but I'm back. Of course, to you, it won't even look like a pause, but anyway, we were using our beige red to color her skin. And we'll just keep going along with that um, and basically just creating a really light layer with the beige red. I may end up adding another color, I don't know. I want to keep this pretty beginner friendly for you guys just so those who aren't used to blending watercolors or even using the water brush learn basically how their colors look before worrying about, you know, making like a realistic skin tone. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. So basically we add this beige red here where the shadows would be on her skin. Basically where we would normally say, I, I was doing this with colored pencils all the way through, I'd be adding like my darker contour colors. And we're just gonna drag it out into the highlights. Let's see if we can get her legs. I apologize for the lighting today. Um, it has been like overcast. Well, it's not even overcast, it's smoke from all the fires, but it's like taken away all of our sunlight. <laughs> And I completely moved my coloring desk, so it's uh, that's why I had to take a break, actually. So my, you know, it's still summer right now, and my kids are always home, and my craft space, which you guys have seen a tour of, it's on my channel, my coloring corner is uh, right off the front door, and there's no door to my office, like it's just open to the world. Which is fine, but when you have a YouTube channel and you're trying to record videos, <laughs> it's like the kids need to be quiet because I have no doors to close. And then, you know, to boot, it's, you know, they'll want a friend over and I'm like, no, no friends can come over because mommy needs to record a tutorial. <laughs> Alright, grab your water brush. And uh, it was just getting to the point where I couldn't get anything done. Oh, a little too wet. So, um, or I'd end up having to like bulk record one day and just like no friends allowed or constantly having to pause in between them coming in and out, like, you know, trying to find a friend to play with. So what we did temporarily is I moved my um, recording and art desk into my master bedroom. So I'm facing a totally different window now. And... Yeah, this, this will take a little getting used to. <laughs> but hopefully it works out. And it's just, well, the rest of summer. So, I mean, they start school like the third week of August. Then I'll move my desk back into my office and I can record when they're at school. But it's just with them home, it's like, I cannot record anything. <laughs> and I've been doing bulk recording and... It, it's really hard to do like five or six videos in a single day. You just lose your your mojo. All right, so we got her skin. See, it's just, it's pretty pale. It's, it's gonna be hard to see on camera, but it's there. Um, and then I want to do, let's do her wings since that way we don't accidentally overlap. So I'm gonna turn it just a smidge. So for the wings, I have picked out basically the turquoise colors. So 
We have cobalt turquoise and light cobalt turquoise. So starting with your cobalt turquoise, which is the darker one. It's basically my shadow color. That in there. I'm not going to do anything super fancy. Like normally when I do wings, I have the wings reflecting all the colors off my page. But because we're doing this as a beginner tutorial, I'm just we're going to stick to a uh, like an aqua color. Tends to be my go-to for wings. I always have like an aqua or a light blue in my wings, even when they're reflecting something. And that's just because. I don't know makes them look like glass <laughs> just my my thought process I guess let's see we'll just add that there okay now grab your light cobalt turquoise and we do want to leave a little white space to drag this into so let's see I'm not going all the way to the end there down here I am. This one will be a little tricky because we'll be dragging the color to some areas, but then also mixing it into others. Now down here on this little piece, I want it a little heavier right here, so I'm going to add a little extra before I go out slightly. Yeah, here in my mess tray, I can close the door and record even when friends are over. And because the master's on its own side of the house on the first floor, no one's above me. No one really would be walking on this side of the house. So. It keeps it kind of quiet, <laughs> other than we may hear the dog scratching and asking to come in. <laughs> so, all right, grab your water brush again. So let's take some of the lighter aqua and just pull it out first into those white spaces. And the light ring I've been wanting to order was finally, like it went on sale for like, it's normally 90 something dollars and it went on sale for like 75, so I bought it today. So next color along we'll have a, a light ring. <laughs> I've been trying to upgrade all my equipment. All right, see how I'm just kind of gently going from our light into our dark. I'm trying to keep within the line so that I don't have any mix over Oops, like that. <laughs> there. Just add more water and mix it together. My brush is kind of dry though, I can tell. Okay, I'm just doing the same thing, grabbing the lighter color. And then just dragging it down into the darker one. Anywhere you see like a line or it looks kind of uneven, just wiggle your brush around, you know, dot it gently so it mixes in. Well, the door won't hide the dog barking, sorry. She's extra excited because there's people here, even though they're not here for her. <laughs> she doesn't understand that part. Okay. Get that in there.
So make sure you dissolve any lines. You don't want to leave pencil lines. Honestly, as long as you uh, use light pressure with your Albrecht Durer, you shouldn't have pencil lines. I had a few of you um, that have asked me about that. They don't leave pencil lines unless you're pressing hard. Um, and it's not the paper you're putting too much pressure if you have straight lines in there. So hopefully that blue is showing up. I know the lighting is really funky today. Okay, now let's do her hair. I had a bunch of browns and they all got out of order because <laughs> I had to move my desk. But let's just find them again. Okay, so we're using the same browns we used on the little snail shell down here. But we're going to use them in her hair. And this will be the probably most simplest hair you've ever seen me do, <laughs> as of late at least. So you'll have your burnt umber and your raw umber. And we're just going to take our burnt umber, which is the darker one. Just kind of put it in there where it, it feels right. Um, you know, if you think that would be a shadow area, put it there. Now normally I would go over this with like pencil or um, layer up the watercolors. But I want to keep this really simple for you guys who are new to your Albrecht doors. So you just kind of get a feel for how these work. You can always do the complicated later. You can't really dive into the complicated until you master <laughs> the basic part first. Kind of like with ink tents. Um, I will do a more advanced one now, since I've kind of shown you guys the gist, but grab your raw umber. I had to first show you the basics of that colorless blender before we dived into like all sorts of complicated color combos. Same thing applies with any medium, really, even colored pencil. You want to start with like one, two, three color blends. Well, obviously you can't blend one color, but you know what I mean. Um, and then work your way up to more complicated blends. And then usually you want to stick within color families. And then you can start branching out into like wacky combos, like combining your oranges and pinks and greens. First you have to get a feel for how a medium works before you start doing all that stuff does take patience and practice, but it, I mean, it, it's not like you have to spend years doing the basics either. <laughs> I'm talking just like, you know, a couple weeks learning the basics and then move on to the advanced. You're good. All right. With our water brush, see how I left some white space? I'm just going to first activate some of this and gently put that in our white space just so I can preserve the highlight. Okay, now this one, we have darker like down below, but also on the sides, so I'm just going to gently drag it. I'm going to have my thing here to wipe it because this is one where you're not going to want to move back and forth. And you want your brush semi, like, almost dry, but not super dry. I know that's really hard to explain. <laughs> you want your brush wet, but not wet. But not dry either. You know, somewhere in between all that. Okay. And then if you have any lines, just go back over them with the water brush. Let's get the other side now. Just keep my rag there so I can... You want to blot the color off because this darker color, we don't want to... It sticks to your water brush, so if I were to go straight from here back to the top, I would ruin my highlight, so that's why I'm wiping it off. This is good practice, actually, if you do plan to get into ink tents, um, to practice wiping off your brush. Because, like with ink tents, ink tents is intense color. 
very vibrant and that will stick to your brush and go wherever you take that brush as long as it's on the bristles so you want to get in the habit of wiping off your brush for those for sure that's why with the colorless blender you even have to wipe it off see there she has kind of like a dirty blonde hair color I mean she kind of looks like her snail but whatever we're trying to go for balance <laughs> they're, they're twins okay so her dress I wanted to do in pinks because I just thought that would be cute but we're just gonna do two pinks so you'll want your middle purple pink and your light magenta we use those in the flowers but that's kind of the point you want to bring the colors down here and create some balance so with your middle purple pink just gonna treat it like a shadow color Okay, now the um, light magenta. You'll notice I haven't even sharpened these throughout this because you don't really need to. The only reason they're sharp right now is because I had sharpened them to swatch them when I first got them. But it's kind of like with ink tents. You don't need to go crazy with the sharpening. All right, I'm leaving a little bit of a white space there in the center, but I'm putting a little bit more of a layer down here because I definitely want more pink. Okay, let's grab your water brush again. Let's lock in our highlight area. Basically, that's kind of like a no-fly zone, except it's a no-wet zone. <laughs> let's drag our color. See, I'm kind of wiggling it around to avoid a harsh line that was trying to form there. You can go back and forth with the light color on your brush, but the second you start getting into that darker pink, you want to be careful about moving around. I mean, you can move the darker pink into the shadow area, you just don't want to pick it up and move it all over the page. Alright. That's pretty good. Okay. So now um, back with the middle, um, sorry, middle purple pink, we are going to start coloring like these are almost like flower petals. For her dress. I think that's part of it. I mean, every time I went to record this today, after we had moved all the desks around, um, Johnny Five, that's the name of our Roomba, <laughs> would turn on because we're having it remap. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll wait till it's done mapping and, you know, has to go recharge. And then I would get sidetracked, um, grab your light magenta. I'd get sidetracked and, yeah. So if you hear a noise, like banging up against the door, <laughs> That is Johnny Five trying to map my master bedroom. <laughs> but 
if uh, if you're too young to know the movie Short Circuit, you probably won't get the reference to Johnny Five. But those of us from the 80s most likely will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Gonna activate again. My brush is a little too wet. So I'm just gonna kinda move it around so the pigment's there. Now originally I had thought of doing the background with a different medium entirely, but I think I'm going to just stick to our Albrecht Doers. Oops, got a little. And the reason for that is not everyone has other watercolors, so I might as well just do this all in Albrecht Durer. And then that way you guys have a little full Albrecht Durer tutorial. Might have to go pause my vacuum because it's being awfully persistent about getting in here right now. <laughs> I don't know how much of my mic is picking that up versus what I'm just hearing. This is real life, people. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Okay. A little sloppy there, so let me just fix that one a little. There, she's got a cute pink dress. Okay, so we are ready for the background, and this is where things are going to get fun and messy and all sorts of things. Um, so I wanted to test something with you guys first. It's always important when you're about to, like, you know, go crazy. So I wanted to take all of our greens that we've used for this whole tutorial. So olive green yellowish, chrome oxide green, permanent green olive, and may green. And I want to kind of practice making a sloppy landscape. So that's what we're testing out because like I said before, there's not a lot to go off of from what the artist gave us. So I wanted to see if I could mix these colors and just kind of be very abstract almost. <laughs> just like randomly place them, see what they turn into. Now we have very different color families here. So when we activate this, we most definitely do not want to mix it around. So let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can kind of see. All right, so I'm sticking with my lighter color first. and I'm kind of just wiggling that where I want it to be. Oh, my brush needs more water. Now, for this one, you're going to want your brush a little more wet because I'm trying to create almost like a loose watercolor effect here and you're going to need a lot of water for that now normally if you're doing loose watercolor with actual watercolors you know like from the palette and whatnot you would wet the page first you can't do that with the pencils because we're putting the pencils on the paper now you could technically wet your page down um put the pencils on a palette, wet them on the palette, and move them over. That is always an option with Albrecht Durer's. So, see how I'm mixing these together just to make them become one. But I want to teach you guys first how to put these on paper. Because, I mean, that's kind of the point of a watercolor pencil. We buy them to put them on the paper. 
if I want to put something on a palette and wet it with a brush and apply it to something, then I might as well just break out my watercolors. <laughs> I bought the pencil so that it would draw on there and activate on there, so that's kind of the point there. Now this paper is not as smooth. This is a toothier one than the cardstock and the books, so some of the lines aren't going to go away. Um, now if this was a watercolor paper, it would, but this is just going to buckle, but okay. So you saw how I moved that all around. So yeah, it actually worked perfectly. So all four colors blend pretty nicely as long as you use a lot of water. So that is why I'm going to grab some clips for this as well, because we are going to want to clip our book ends like the pages here down and hold it as tight as possible to prevent buckling. But then we are going to use those four colors to kind of just create this effect all across the bottom here and then to about like midway through her. And then we're going to transition into our sky. I was originally going to add like some, you know, dirt and whatnot, but then I thought, you know, I think it would just be better to do that. And then it picks up a lot of those odds and ends that make no sense. I like these vines that just go into nowhere land. <laughs> so that is what we're going to do. So let me grab some clips and we will get started. Okay, so I have clipped, let me see if I can, I have clipped down here in the corner and up here, pulling it as tight as I can. It's still a little loose, but I also have my heat tool, my Ranger Heat It. It's basically a lot like a hairdryer. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But um, I'll be using that to help dry my page. I do recommend doing that if you can because we don't have anything wax based. So it's okay to get it, you know, a little warm and then that way it'll dry faster. So just something to consider. Okay, so we're just going to put our colors, our four colors at random. So you can do this however you want as well. Like you don't really need to mimic everything I do here, but just remember to keep a very light pressure as you're putting the colors down. If you put too much pressure, it's going to leave those lines. In fact, I'll do this like bottom side over here and then we'll take a little break and finish the rest off camera because really it's the same old same. <laughs> so right now I'm grabbing another color. You do want to gently nudge it into the spine. And see, I'm getting in between the grasses. Again, just at random. Like, really don't think about it. If you think about it, it's going to look like you thought about it. Another color. Very light pressure. And if there's really tiny spaces, don't worry, you'll have water on your brush. It will get in there, or paint on your brush, I'm sorry. Obviously there's water on your brush. It's a water brush. You knew what I meant, right? All right, now my fourth color. This one's more brown, because this is the olive green uh, yellowish. Remember, we're trying to go about halfway here. Just grab another color. Like seriously, just grab your colors 
at random. I think about up to here will be good. Okay, I may miss a few things, but okay. That's good enough for example purposes. So, next thing you want to do is take your water brush. Make sure it's actually pretty wet this time. Just kind of start with your lighter colors. Just start wiggling it in there. Just be really cautious of the colors you're mixing. So, and then of course, you can drag it over, drag it back, try not to drag it on the things we've already colored. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Okay. Getting there. And if you start noticing lines, just drag some colors into it, but it's okay if you have a few lines. We kind of want it to look patchy because it's grass. It's not going to be one just flat area of color. You want it to have some dimension and look poofy and like pillowy and, you know, like a bunch of grass. <laughs> See how I still have some on the tip of my brush so I can easily kind of mix in these areas. Now up here, we're just gonna drag it into the white space. Should have started on this side. I'm just using whatever's left on my brush to kind of drag it up here. Try to get all the little white spots that you can. Trust me, you'll finish and then be like, oh, I missed a spot and have to go back <laughs> and just guarantee it. Especially with this one and how much there is going on in here. Kind of just dragging it into the white space up above but I'm not really going for an even like straight across line when I do that okay so then you're just gonna take if you have one a heat tool and just dry that thing this will help it from buckling as much it's still gonna buckle because this isn't watercolor paper but it won't buckle as much. And that bad boy is dry. This thing gets super hot, by the way. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. It's dry. So I am going to just keep doing that down here at the bottom. So again, I'm just going to mix those colors. So as you can see here, I'm going to mix those colors all the way through on this side. And again, just see how here at the top, it's very lightly fading out through the grass at our halfway point. Some's high up here, some is only faded to here. So like you see how it's not even. We want that because then we're gonna have our blue come and merge down in here with this. If it, We just don't want a straight line across. So that's why I say rely on your brush. Oops, see, I even missed a spot here. Rely on your brush to kind of drag into the white spaces and then just pull that color out. This is a good technique once you start learning more advanced blending um, because once you have a ton of colors, you wanna learn how to hide your lines. But yeah, I'm just going to keep doing that for the rest of this and then when I come back, we will tackle the sky and then I think part four will just be embellishments. Um, basically just a white gel pen and mm, 
maybe some stickles. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it depends on what I'm feeling. So I will catch you guys when I finish my grass and when you finish yours. Just make sure when you come back for the next part that this is 100% dry. So if you are not using a heat tool, then you need to wait for it to air dry and touch it on the top and the back and make sure it's actually dried through. That way we're not continuing to soggy up the paper and the top will take a lot more. So be prepared. I will see you guys in a minute. Okay, so our grass is dry and we are ready to do our sky. So um, the paper is in off-white color. So you might notice it more when we're trying to do this, this sky, but especially with the lighting in here. So I'm sorry if it looks really yellow right now. <laughs> you know, trying to get this all situated in my new area, but I am going to move my paper up so that we are blocking off this part. You always want paper behind any page you're working on. Then I am going to clip it again. I usually just pull the paper really tight and then clip it down. Do that here too at the bottom. Okay. So for our sky, we are just going to use our blues. And I think I might add in some pink, maybe. I don't know. Let's see how the blue looks first. It might look just fine. So we're just going to use the same blues we were using in her wings. Um, which is the cobalt turquoise and light cobalt turquoise. Let's see. It's kind of going to be the same thing as we did with the ground down here. Oops, <laughs> got to really move that book. Um, we're just going to put the color down, not a ton of thought behind it, uh, and then we're just going to make sure our brush is really wet so that when we mix them all together, you don't get any lines. Now, the one thing is we are bringing this color down into our green. So look to see where your green kind of ends and have your colors end just a little bit above so there's white space in between. That way we can drag the color gently down in there versus having it very saturated when it comes down. So I'll show you what I mean because I will probably start on this side, color all the way down, and then, you know, we'll pause it and everybody can finish the other side and then we'll come back when it's all dry. So I'm going to start with my light cobalt turquoise and I'm going to just kind of notice how I'm holding it way back here so that I use a light pressure. That'll help you Especially if you're more heavy handed like I am, I just naturally want to smash pencils on the page. <laughs> um, this will help you not get lines with these Albrecht doors. I'm just going to put this down. I'll do some up here too. Usually when I do like the sky with these kind of pencils, I like to almost zigzag it. Kind of like a galaxy effect. You definitely don't want to like color block it. You don't want just like straight lines across. It should be nice and sloppy-ish so that when we wet it all together, it looks, I don't know, cohesive, <laughs> I guess is the word. All right, take the darker blue, which is just cobalt turquoise. Start randomly placing that. Don't worry if it overlaps a little bit too, that's fine. I mean, it's all gonna be mixed in together. I do want it a teensy bit darker down here, and that's just because, you know, we're kind of coming out of all this grass. Okay. See, now I have some green here, so I'm just gonna leave a white space there. Same thing, I'm going to leave a white space there. Okay. Going back to my lighter color. I might even add another.
another blue. Let's take a look real quick. Instead of adding pink, I think we're going to add another blue. So we have cobalt turquoise and light cobalt turquoise. I think I'm going to add bluish turquoise. So let's grab that. Okay. So yes, let's add bluish turquoise, which is 149. I think that'll just add the right balance of darkness. <laughs> I'm all scribbly lined right now. <laughs> uh, I'm actually doing light pressure, but the point is so sharp it's doing a squiggly line. Just kind of add this in. Again, it's okay if they overlap our other colors. Now you can see my lines when I'm putting it down, but because it's light pressure, those lines are going to dissolve. But if I was using heavy pressure as I put those lines down, you would see the lines. It would be harder to dissolve them, basically. And really, with watercolor pencils, especially the higher quality ones like Albrecht Durer, Supercolor, Museum Aquarelle, um, it doesn't require a lot of pressure to get the pigment out. And the whole point of watercolors is to have a muted color. I'm just going back to my cobalt turquoise. You know, it's supposed to be lighter and look washed out because that's kind of the effect of watercolor. So it's okay if it doesn't look as pigmented or as bold as the polychromos, you know, version of that color because that's not what we're going for. You guys are totally seeing that shadow from the sunlight there. <laughs> I might have to change my filming schedule. Um, grab the light cobalt turquoise. I normally film in the mornings, but um, my master bedroom has the morning sun all up in there. I'm bringing this one up closer to the edge of the paper. And if you don't want to use paper behind, you can use like a plastic sheet. Um, or like I get those cheap cutting boards from the dollar store and cut them in half and I use those for backings when I'm using wet medium sometimes. Uh, they're just rougher so I tend to just use paper. I'm not like using actual watercolors so this page isn't getting super saturated. Okay, now grab your water brush and we're gonna start at the bottom here. Let's just grab our color, slowly bring it down into the white space. I want the, the greens and blues to meet one another. Just grab that color. And we can always go back and pull some off the tip and add more once it's dry. There is a total green thing I missed right there. I'm going to take a little bit off of my cobalt turquoise here. Just add a little bit more color. We're just going to cover that up and pretend it doesn't exist. Just pull that down. And I'm just going to get that wet so it's not as bold. Trying to not get it on my leaves. Be all graceful in here, but. Just get that one a little more wet and pull some of that color off. If you do get it on your leaves while it's wet, just pick it up with your finger or a cotton swab. It will come off. There. 
Okay. Then we have some over here. And then now we can just start mixing up our sky. You can always take what's left on your brush and add it back into the white space because it will stay on your water brush. Just remember we're using a or we're in a big space here, so you want your brush pretty wet for this stage. That way we can keep moving it around, getting any lines and transitions out. And bring some of that color over here. And just kind of have to wiggle it into the spine. Just kind of wiggle it around so it wets the pigment. See how it just dissolves. Use my finger like an eraser. I'm just kind of working my way upward because I want the color to concentrate this way because I want it to gently nudge into the grass and green area. Use the circular motions, almost like you're buffing the color out. It also gives that pillowy look. Now you'll notice your brush is getting too dry once you start seeing transition lines. And that's when you want to wet your brush again. If you're using a normal watercolor brush, just dip it in your water. If you're using one of these, just you know, squeeze it off onto your rag. And then, like I'm gonna do right now. Yes, it is a lot of water. You're gonna get some buckling. But like with the grass, I just use my heat tool. You could seriously use a hairdryer. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you have like embossing and you have an embossing tool, you can use that. But just remember an embossing tool gets really, really hot compared to like a hairdryer or a heat tool. So keep that in mind anytime you're using that to dry a page. It is more targeted though, like it's not fanning out because the heat's just right there in front of it. But like say you're using that to dry a water medium right next to your Prismacolor. Um, Prismacolor melts very easily trust me been there done that and it was big oopsie <laughs> so did not look pretty it pretty much melts like a crayon would under heat so just keep in mind anytime you're using a heat tool of any source what you're using to heat but also what medium is next to what you're heating because that is quite important Because you might be drying watercolor, but you might have watercolor next to a medium that melts and <laughs> it can get ugly real fast. Yeah, if it's just all watercolor, you're fine. I can't remember when I did that. It was a long time ago, but I was making a watercolor background. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use a hairdryer because at the time I didn't have a you know, nifty little heat tool. And I was like, I'm going to just dry this so it doesn't buckle as much and it dries quicker so that I can keep going. And my Prismacolor was right next to it. <laughs> it melted. <laughs> like it straight up got all warm and gooey. And uh, maybe one day I'll do a demonstration and show you guys. I mean, you can do it yourself. Just grab some Prismacolor, put them on a page and heat them up. And just watch what happens. They get really shiny and slippery and your colors, like if you have little defined lines, yeah, those go away. Especially if you have lots of layers or you are heavy handed and you put a thick amount down, it just straight up melts like butter. <laughs> All right, I'm going to heat this up.
If you do for some reason have like transition lines, you can always go back over with a wet brush and pull it off the tip of your pencil. Or you can um, put more pencil down. Like see I have a line here. I'll just put more pencil down. Sometimes you can just reactivate and wiggle it around. But I'll probably just put more pencil down and fix it. But see, as you can see, it's just a really soft background. Um, and hopefully it's showing up on camera. Maybe if I zoom in, you guys can see it better. But it's a very soft blue, and that's what we want. We want it kind of washed out. So go ahead and keep going on the rest of the sky using those same three colors, which are the cobalt turquoise, the light cobalt turquoise, and bluish turquoise. Let me zoom you back out. And you'll just finish this side using whether you want to use a heat tool or just let it air dry. And then when we come back for our final part, we will just be adding our white embellishments and little details to make things stand out. Okay, welcome to the final part of the color along. Everything should be dry. And because I used my heat tool, I actually don't have a lot of buckling. Um, it's kind of a combination of pinning it down with the clips and the heat tool. So now is time just to add some embellishments. This will be as long or as short as you want it to be. <laughs> if you feel like you're done, then you don't need to do this step. If you want to add some fun little things with me, then you can stick around. Um, because this is A is for August, I'm using my Arteza white gel pen. I'm using the 1.0 size. And then I have these Art Ship glitter paint pens. So glad they started with the letter A because I was like, oh, I can't use stickles. <laughs> and so they're just paint pens. I will have a swatching video of these pretty soon. But yeah, you just use them kind of like a Posca, same thing. Um, I grabbed a pink and a silver. I may not use the pink though. Kind of have to see where I go. But for the white gel pen, I definitely wanted to use this on her wings. So if your gel pen like clogs like mine does, just use your hand, get it moving. You may notice in a few of my videos, I have white all over my hand. You'll know I've been using gel pen that day. So I like the Arteza gel pens. However, I do have a small gripe with them. And that is, once they get dirty, no matter what I do to clean them, I've even used like an alcohol swab to try and clean off some of the gunk. It's just not working. <laughs> so, um... In fact, I might have to go grab my Signo because this one's not even cooperating. But yeah, like when I first got these, they were awesome. Like you could use them on top of Prisma, which is very waxy and, you know, slippery surface. You could use them straight up on top of your Prisma and they would move without issue. So yeah, if you have the Arteza, just, oh, see, it's already clogging. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to use my A is for August, but I might actually have to just grab my Signo and say sorry. But let's see if we can make this one work. I'm using the 1.0 because the lines are really thick here, so I wanted to cover them all up. You'll notice I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth, and that's because if I move it just in a straight line, it won't, it skips. Because like I said, it's clogged. And that just looks patchy. Ah! Might have to keep going back over it once it dries. Yeah, I've, I really liked these when I first got them because they were so great at covering everything up. Better than a Posca because, you know, Posca sometimes takes a couple layers. And so I was so excited because this was a gel pen that worked on top of any pencil medium at the time and then yeah they just kind of clogged up on me and a lot of people have experienced that and you know um, I'd watched a few videos and 
people are like, well, you just clean it and it fixes it. I've cleaned mine and it's not, but it could be maybe I used them more on extra waxy surfaces because I did predominantly use these on top of my uh, Prismacolors. So it could have a ton of wax build up in there. <laughs> I don't know. But um, funny thing is, I would still rebuy them. Like, I almost want to buy a brand new set and try again. And, like, maybe this time, like, clean it almost every other time I use it. And see if that prevents it from doing this. Because it was awesome to not have to spray a workable fixative. Because that's the worst. You're, like, ready to just finish the page. But no, you got to go spray it, wait for it to dry. And then do all your white embellishments. Because my Signo, I have Signo and Jelly Roll and some no-name brand. And all of them are really rough to get to work on top of the waxy finish of a Prisma. Like, they'll work, but you're sitting there fighting them. So it's easier to just spray down a workable fixative. And then it grips right on. So... So I was so giddy when these first came out because I was watching people just straight on their videos go look at this and they would go right on top of a Prisma. I was like, oh my gosh. But yeah, these are just, once they get gunked up, there's no coming back, I guess. So this might take a while. If you really wanted to use like glossy accents. I guess I technically could use glossy accents because part of the name, accents, um, is with an A. And I wanted to use my Mod Podge Extreme Glitter because it is so cool on fairy wings. That'll have to wait for the right month. Other things you can use for glitter, you can use like the Jelly Roll um, Stardust Glaze. So they have one that's like a glitter glaze pen, and then you can also just use the Jelly Roll Glaze, which is a lot like glossy accents, except it's in pen form. And I like to use the glaze pen if I have like a really small area I'm trying to get into. <laughs> Makes it easier than... Um, using the glossy accents. I know my white gel pen looks incredibly sloppy right now. <laughs> but I'm probably just gonna have to keep going over it till I get all these black lines covered. I figured the 1.0 would be thick enough to cover some of these lines, but I was wrong. I said this would be the short part, and here we are, like, five minutes of white gel pen. <laughs> so I might, you know what, I think to save all of your sanity, um, I might just pause this, keep going about this, and then I will come back once I've got this all filled in, and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay, so I sat there playing with my wings for a little while, hopefully... That's good enough. I might end up doing more. I don't know. An Arteza gel pen was really not wanting to work. I might even go break out my Apple Barrel acrylic paints at this point because it does start with A. All right, so I'm going to take my silver um, glitter paint pen. I, these are water-based ones, by the way. And again, it's from Artship Design. And I'm going to just add some little sparkly dots to her wings in no particular order. I'm just kind of adding some sparkle. Some of these art ship design ones come off more metallic than glitter, um, but they're really fun to play with. And they're a little wider than 
<clears throat> your like gel pen so it covers more space, you know. I'm just kind of randomly covering up some of these black lines as well with a little bit of glitter. You know, just give some shimmer on some parts of the wing. It's a lot like a Posca. Sometimes you have to prime it a little <laughs> to get it to flow. Yeah, at this point, I'm just kind of randomly adding lines and dots. That way, when it catches the light, there will be little, you know, shimmers here and there. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to do the same thing to her skirt. Just add a bunch of little dots. You kind of like with tool. How it has that little glittery effect to it. Now I will tell you these don't cover up black lines very well. Um, I tried it on a Hannah Carlson page when I was doing a buddy color and at first it looked like it covered them up but then once it actually dried it started to show through Kind of like with a Posca. So you will have to do multiple layers if you plan to use these to cover lines. They're just not very opaque, but I mean it is a glitter paint pen, so I guess you can kind of expect some, you know, transparency there. Alright, I'm just going to dry this so I don't accidentally rub it. So like if you hold it, well, I don't have good light in here anymore, but hopefully the sparkle shows. Uh, it's going to be one thing I got to learn to practice with. Okay. So I think up here in the sky, I want to just make little flowy white dots, kind of like as if, you know, white pollen was floating off the flowers almost. So I'm taking my Arteza again, just kind of drawing a little line. So basically draw the directional line you want it to go and then just add dots to go along with it. Let me zoom you guys in a little on that one. Okay. And the same thing with this one here. I'm going to have a line curve out. And see, I kind of made my line. Now I'm just adding dots to enhance it. And I might make this one a little wider. Hopefully the dots are showing for you guys. Okay, and then let's do this one down here. Actually, let's go over to this one at the bottom. So same thing. I'm going to have this one come across the grass and loop back up. Now I'm just going to add dots. Again, you can totally skip this part if you just want to call it done. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like busy work <laughs> and I want to keep adding things. I don't know if anyone else has that problem. Trust me, I believe less is more, but I just can't. I can breach it, but I can't do it. All right. Um, with these little ones, I'm just going to have little itty bitty white pollen puffs. We'll call them pollen puffs. This one's kind of awkward. 
I'm trying to work this direction so my hand doesn't accidentally go over it. Okay, got this one little one down here. I'm going to have this one curl this way. Now, if you're not you know, say you're watching this way after A is for August, or you're not participating, you could totally do this with stickles, and it would be even cuter. I'm just trying to stick to my A is for August as best I can. Make that one a little longer. the jets are flying by. <laughs> Wouldn't be my channel without some jets. I'm actually going to have this land on her hair. There, okay. Um, let's get this flower up here. I do want them to kind of go in random directions. You can do this with anything. You can do it with a sparkly glitter gel pen too. Um, like if you have the stardust ones, they have like that white glitter. Can skip this step entirely. Totally up to you. That one go this way. And this one. I'll go this way. But I want it to be a pretty big plume. That's the word. Plume. You know, like a plume of smoke, except this is a plume of magical pollen. <laughs> At least that's what it is in my story. Okay, I got this one down here. You could even do this with embossing powder, actually. If you have like a sparkly embossing powder, that would be really pretty and like a little dotted stamp or even a star stamp honestly could pull this off okay we got this flower right here too this one I'm going to have overlap the big one okay let's see Oh, I'm sticking my hand in my test strip right there. I was like, why do I have a sparkle on my hand? <laughs> so I get for doing a color along when I'm moving my art space all over. You can tell I'm like all over the place. Okay, there we go. I'm going to treat these as two flowers down here. So I'll have this one go this way. This one, go this way. And it may not show as much on camera as it does in person, but you definitely have little sparkle. I don't wanna say sparkle, cause they're not sparkly, but little white dots. All right, I think let's zoom you guys out so you can see the whole picture. Let me remove the ugly clips so we can just see the whole thing in its glory. There we go. All right, and we are done. We have our, oh, what's the title of this one? A Friendly Encounter is the name of this page. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this color along. It was fun for me, um, and I hope you guys like the format. So let me know in the comments below what you think about how I presented this one. Um, like I said, I was trying to combine the best of both worlds when it came to color along requests. But yeah, guys, I hope 
you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you kind of an idea of how to use your um, Albrecht Durers. And hopefully the sparkle shows, but it probably won't. <laughs> but maybe when I get to another month that is an A, I'll come back and add more sparkle and not break my rules. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this color along. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And then until next time, take care.